Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Sure on the Sheep, which I mean um, <clears throat> Overclock Workshop, the final episode of Overclock Workshop Season 2 before we go into uh, Season 3, which will be about grenades. Anyway, this time I'm talking about the grappling hook. Um, obviously, the, I tend to go through a lot of caveats when it comes to these videos in terms of how viable the concept of traversal support to overclocks are. I'm not going to go through that rigmarole today. It will surely come up as I go through it, or just through various explanations of the different ideas. But either way, I'm not going to go into it right now. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to dive into it, show you some things that I think we could, we we should see or should get for the grappling hook potentially. Things that would be really cool at least. The first one, um, maybe not as much to be honest, because the first one is um, turbo hook, which would have been the clean overclock, which gives a small increase to hook deployment and retraction speed. I don't know why I've written 10 to 15%, it could just settle on 1, 15% seems alright. So, but if we take this as it was, like when I came up with the idea, it was really about um, sort of adding to sort of the two elements of making the hook faster that people don't normally think about. But like most people probably just think about um, uh, recharge time. That's pretty much it. I feel like some, and maybe someone understands the concept of either deployment or retraction speed. But deployment speed is just how fast it shoots out. That's how fast it goes from you to where you're aiming. And retraction speed is how fast it, how long it takes for it to come back to you. Obviously, retraction speed is not thought about as much because it tends to be instantaneous anyway. Because you're probably letting go of the grappling hook quite close to where it um where you where you pointed it. Um, either way, increasing both of these things would obviously make the grappling hook feel faster. But in that sense, there's not a lot that's making it stand out as an overclock. Um, and the only reason that this needs to be an overclock is the fact that it adds two small bonuses, which is much more befitting of a clean than a normal weapon upgrade. Um, although it, it's sort of just, <laughs> I guess it's like, you could just add more of those upgrades, I suppose. And that's why it would only really make sense as an overclock because we already have we already have those upgrades, which is why it really this is one that even though it's so simple, it's one that really only makes sense um as an upgrade. So we have all this stuff. Um increase retraction speed. Yeah. We got all of them. In fact, these are actually both in the same tier, so I suppose that might be an inspiration behind it. If you look at the normal grappling hook modification, faster hook speed and faster hook retraction speed are actually in the same tier. So this overclock would have allowed you to have a small increase to both at the same time, which also meant, but it does mean you would have to double down one of them, which isn't often the case. You usually would have a third option that you'd be able to take while still getting small bonuses to the other two things. In this case, you would have to double down on one unless you didn't take an upgrade in that tier. I don't, I don't see why you would do that. I mean, I would definitely double down on deployment speed. Um, so I could increase that even further, I would. And maybe that's my, that's really the only good argument I have for this existing. Um, aside from that, it doesn't really need to. Um, I probably could come up with something more unique. So I'm not really going to spend much time on this one. But speaking of something more unique, um, we do have grab and pull module, which was supposed to be a balanced overclock. I mean, it is a balanced overclock, but obviously we're going to have to make some changes. Um, although in this case of this one, uh, <laughs> it might be impossible. Grappling hook can now hook onto entities and objects and will pull you towards them. And you can also press reload, which switches it to grab mode. It starts off in pull mode. Um, in grab mode, players and objects will be pulled towards you. Grabbing enemies won't won't do that, but it will aggro them to you. Um, and we have a much longer hook deployment time in pull mode, and much longer hook retraction time in grab mode. Of course, graduating with honors from the Halo Infinite School of Bullshit Grappling Hook Physics. So, this is an idea that I feel like gets thrown around a little bit. Um, it never in the same sort of uh, the exact same way. You know, my version of this is not the same as any other version you'll find, but it's still a similar idea. It's still a, a very basic foundation that's shared. Um, and it's the idea of pulling things towards you with the grappling hook. It's the main one. Um, so what would be the benefits of this? Uh, well, grappling hook can now hook onto entities and objects or pull you towards them. That's an interesting one. The pull module part. I feel like people don't really think about pulling towards you. You can be, you can potentially magnetize onto objects, um, which is actually the least useful part of that mode in the, in the pool version uh, the most useful thing to do would be grappling onto enemies and teammates obviously when you have the grab mode enabled 
you can't you can pull enemies towards you because there's no animations that allow for that we can't rag though enemies while they're alive it's just not a thing which is why i made it the way it is but in pull mode you can at least pull yourself towards enemies which means you'll be able to pull yourself for example towards mac terra which could actually be useful or possibly towards a cave leech um, I feel like it's multiple ways this, this could be useful. Maybe the top of a spitballer. Not sure why you'd want to do that, though. Um, you could also grapple onto patrol bots. <laughs> um, I think there's a lot of ways that could be useful. Although, of course, I feel like grab is the most important part of this. The grab module. Where in grab mode, um, it will pull players towards you when you hook them. Which means you can get them out of danger easily or troll them more effectively. And you can also pull objects towards you. Um, which is, of course, uh, extremely useful, especially on something like point extraction or a cunt or really anything where that might be needed. Think about um, a tritolite deposit. Think about how incredible that would be. <coughs> Excuse me. But <clears throat> well, my point with the usefulness of this mechanic is pretty obvious. Um, also, sometimes people do implement this idea of putting enemies towards you, which we know can't really be a thing at the moment. So if this version of the overclock the idea would it would at least aggro enemies towards you, which in its own in its own way would have strategic value, you know, especially in a dreadnought fight. Something that allows you to do that, it might be actually be overpowered. You could actually you could actually get rid of that, and that's the thing. Obviously, we have penalties here because this is a balanced overclock, and I thought they both make sense. In pull mode, you have much longer hook deployment time, right? Um, as in, it takes longer for it to shoot out, but it will pull you towards something. And then in in a uh, grab mode, it'll take longer for the for for it to pull the thing towards you, um, which I think makes sense as penalties. But the thing is, we know that we're not going to get traversal on um support tool overclocks unless there's some massive shift in design philosophy, right? So we need to try and envisage this as an upgrade of sorts. And I think like the only way to do that is to take the second positive and remove the enemies part. If we just have the grab module where you can grab and pull and um, teammates and objects towards you, and that's it. That could actually be a perfectly fine tier five upgrade for the for the grappling hook. That's how I think it could work. I really do. Additionally, you could have the top part be its own thing as well, and it could be in the same tier. That's probably a really perfect way of doing things. Actually, for like a, adding a tier five to the grappling hooks modifications, you would add grab and pull mode as the two different options. That's how I would do it. Um, and maybe you'd have a, a third option, which is the aggro rig thing, because I would love that. Being able to aggro enemies towards you. I mean, a perk where you could just taunt would also be fantastic, and we'll get into that when we talk about perks. Um, in a, be a while now, but still, we're going to do it eventually. Um, but yeah, I I think the strengths of the mechanics presented are fairly obvious. It's just the implement, implementation of them cannot be like this. Although I think I made it pretty clear how you could turn them into just basic modifications that you would have to choose between, rather than having it be all in one, and you would like switch firing modes. I feel like I've got a reasonable handle on how this should be implemented. I hope you all agree. Um, so that is grab and pull module. The next one would be the unstable one. Obviously, we need to try and turn it to something else. This is wall hang. I'm in your walls. And as you to hang onto the end point of your hook for a short while, um, I wasn't sure about the time that you'd be able to do this for. And the whole point is that you can use other equipment while wall hanging, but you have reduced recharge speed which is alleviated by the fact you're going to be spending a lot of time hanging on walls, giving your grappling hook time to recharge. So how exactly would this work? Well, I sort of envisaged it as you would sort of grapple and you've got to reach the end of your grapple before you wall hang. You reach the very end of your grapple, you hold on and it will, maybe it will click or beep, and then you know you're, you're clinging on. Or you just, you just you grapple straight to the point and you hold it and then you switch to a weapon and that's how you wall hang. And you go into wall hang mode. I guess I feel like the logistics of it would be fairly simple. It's just in um, I'm just undecided. But I still think it wouldn't be hard to figure out. Um, so the benefits of a wall hang are somewhat dubious, I suppose. It would be more um, suited for mining than anything else. I I know that for certain. Um, and actually, it kind of stops there. To be honest, I do think it's a really cool idea, especially if we could wall run. Um, but it it sort of does stop there. Um, Maybe you have some ideas about how wall hanging could be useful. I am somewhat lost. Um, I thought it was a good idea at the time. And, well, here we are. Um, but if it were a modification, for example, I feel like you could potentially have it be a modification. I feel like that's fine. If it just means 
once you get to the end point of your grapple, you'll stay there for like five seconds, maybe. I think that could be a perfectly suitable tier four or five upgrade for the grappling hook. I think you could do that. But I do think the usefulness of it is somewhat dubious still, you know? Apart from mining, what would the true use of it be? Apart from staying out of danger for longer, you know? It's not like it would help you prevent fall damage. Um, I think you can see probably see why. So, I don't know what to say about it now. So, unfortunately, that's all I've got for this week. Might seem like a bit of an unceremonious end to this part of the uh, Overclock Workshop series, but that's sort of where we're at. I mean, I wouldn't say my passion ever um, lifted. It definitely didn't while I was making these, but you sort of, um, there's this internalisation of sort of the things said by Ghost Ship about how they're not up for adding overclocks to traverse on support tools. It's sort of, um, I wouldn't say got to be, I don't think it's the right way to put it at all, but sort of, there's just an understanding of that that sort of made this um, feel somewhat less feasible. I actually think it's going to be a lot better though when we get to the grenades, and I'd actually like to um, provide a small teaser for the grenades actually, because first of all, it's going to shake up the uh, visual formatting, which I think is important. So if you'll allow me just a moment, um, here, here would be the first one, it's going to be the lure, and a, uh, a grenade that we've caught some flack for our opinions on as of recent. Um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm actually quite excited to get to grenades, although that'll be a couple of weeks from now, obviously, two weeks from now at least, unless I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to take a break from the series for like a week. Um, obviously, it's still every other week, so I mean, it would be, it could be three weeks from now that we start, although I imagine I'm going to want to get into this as soon as possible. A lot of grenades to get through, and I'm pretty excited about it. I see it being a lot more realistic than traversal and support tools, uh, overclocks that is. Um, so I'll see you then. Until then, though, uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to like, subscribe, um, and go buy yourself a nice fried chicken sandwich. All right, take care, guys.